about the curfew uh, yeah. going into effect tomorrow. So what are your thoughts on this? You know, I appreciate that the, the state is sending a clear message that this is serious people. And I think it's appropriate during the holidays that people stay particularly aware that this is a year like none other and that large family gatherings, social occasions, we've got to wait till 2021 for all those fun things. Uh, and I, I know that the state is not trying to be punitive. They are trying to send a clear message. Uh, that is certainly how we're taking it. Please, no essential activities after 10 o'clock. Now, that doesn't mean you can't walk the dog. You can, but just no more of these gatherings. And certainly, businesses should not be open unless it's for takeout or delivery uh, after 10 o'clock. Now, why does it matter though what time it is? I mean, obviously this virus can spread at noon as you know, easily as it can spread at midnight. Uh, my understanding is that this is what the science says and that's what we have to be following right now. That late at night, people tend to consume alcohol. They tend to be less careful about wearing their masks. Uh, so that's my understanding about the time frame. And, and I think the state is, conscious that we are sacrificing so much right now. I think people are tired. And so to try and give a reasonable time frame is trying to kind of meet the public halfway. Now you mentioned that we're not trying to be punitive about this. So without any actual teeth, it sounds like a lot of law enforcement agencies are you know, refusing to do any actual enforcement on this. Does it matter? You know, I think it does. And for example, in Oakland, we discovered uh, a place called Humanist Hall that was renting out for large scale parties in direct violation of health orders and making money from it. And that's the type of activity that has got to be stopped. We were successful in getting a temporary restraining order from the courts. Uh, and so we will be enforcing against that business. But that's, I know our focus is people who are making money off violating our health orders. That's my highest enforcement priority. Okay, so if somebody's walking down the street, we know dog walking is allowed, but say you don't have a dog and you're walking down the street, is, is there any chance you're going to get stopped? Um, someone might inquire and, and try and make you aware of what the new order is, but that is not going to be an enforcement priority. Uh, I appreciate that at the beginning of the pandemic, our police officers never gave out tickets. They gave out masks. <laughs> it was a way to engage the public and inform them about what these safety protocols are that are not just about keeping you healthy, Anne. It's also about keeping me healthy. So it's important for the public to know. But again, we're focusing on people who are making money from violating our health orders. All right, let's talk a little bit about masks because I know a lot of the mayors in the South Bay are holding a, a news conference later on this morning trying to make sure that people do this. Uh, what do you think is the disconnect and, and are people in, in your city wearing masks as much as you'd like to see? Well, it's not perfect yet, but I have seen a huge improvement, especially around Lake Merritt where we have paid for ambassadors. We've put a lot of energy into getting mask wearing, particularly around kind of Oakland's living room, which is the lake. But as time has gone on, we've learned a lot more about the science of this disease. And it turns out that mask wearing is far more effective than we ever dreamed at the beginning of this pandemic. Also being outdoors. Uh, it is that indoor lack of air circulation that poses a special risk. And so those two activities are really driving what we know is gonna keep this curve down. All right, so Alameda County right now moving into the purple tier, back in the purple tier. What are your thoughts on that? Any concerns for the economy as we you know, look toward the holiday season? Oh, and I just got um, such sad you know, text messages from some of our beloved restaurant owners. They've been struggling so much already this year. They had just figured out how to do limited indoor dining people that got to go back to their churches and worship on Sundays. And all that has now been pulled back. But Alameda County is in a good position because we have taken a conservative approach 
all along. And so hopefully this will not be a significant sacrifice, but more a big warning shot that we've got to really take this seriously. Uh, the, the case rate in the last two weeks has just ballooned. Uh, I have found those numbers very disturbing and the impact on our healthcare system. And it's not just the number of people who are getting COVID, it's people who have other serious health issues uh, that might not get the care that they need because our health system is overwhelmed. Yeah, that is really concerning. Anything else you wanna say on that topic? Um, you know, COVID, the rules, the masks, um, I guess I'll just share one thing. You know, I had my town hall last night and we had a uh, the head of psychology uh, for Kaiser Permanente on. And, you know, don't forget to take care of yourself. Uh, check in with yourself, your loved ones. These are incredibly stressful times. And we've certainly heard that this holiday season, we cannot travel or gather in the ways that we've done for our whole lives. I know my husband, this is gonna be the first Christmas of his entire life that he has not spent with his family in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Wow. But that's what we have to do. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, do little things to take care of yourself uh, during this very stressful time. That's good advice. Um, let's talk a little bit about the help for teachers on the way. Housing, financial help, what are, what are we looking at here? Oh yeah, we love our students and we love our teachers here in Oakland, but they do not get paid enough to live in this expensive Bay Area. And that's caused a few problems. One, a difficulty recruiting and retaining teachers, especially in special education and STEM subjects and also an inability to get enough teachers of color. And studies show that diverse students need some teachers that look like them to actually learn at their highest levels. And so we are uh, attacking all those problems with a great pilot that excites me so much. Uh, we've secured some beautiful apartments in um, a Laurel apartment building, uh, luxury uh, units befitting of our beloved educators. They're only paying $350 a month. Uh, the owners discounted the units. Wow. We've raised private funds to make up that difference. And then for some first and second year teachers, we're just giving them some extra cash, $500 a month to just say, we love you. We want you to stay teaching with our kids and our community. And where's this money coming from? Uh, it is all privately raised. None of it is coming from the taxpayers. A uh, huge thanks to the California Endowment, the Hellman Foundation, and the beautiful Lisa Pritzker and her foundation. Uh, this is a pilot. I believe this is one of the fastest and most cost efficient ways that we can address teacher retention, as well as battling this high cost of living, particularly for our beloved educators. And it's not, it doesn't require us to build new buildings, which takes a lot of time and money. It's utilizing existing apartments with you know uh, char charitable owners that are willing to kind of meet us halfway. So uh, if this works and we see a huge increase in retention and especially recruitment of teachers of color in these hard to hire subjects, I wanna scale this and do this for a lot more teachers. Yeah, it's really cool. And it kind of works out for the landlords too. You know, you're going to have like a normal tenant who's going to hang the rent and, you know, not pulling <laughs> mutually beneficial, but that's really cool. I, I had not gotten the details and, about that. And, um, the, and then um, before we go, because I know you're on a, on a tight time, paper. go oh. ahead. I was just gonna say, and the owner of the building, the Paloma, she's a former teacher. And that's part of why she was really excited to participate in this. Very cool, very cool. Okay, we'll continue to follow that. And um, before you go, any thoughts on the governor's potential appointment to Kamala Harris' Senate seat? What are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, it's it's the honor of a lifetime. It's uh, been very humbling to be on 
the short list of considerations. I know the governor has a hard job. He has a lot of really qualified people on that list, including our own Congresswoman, Barbara Lee. So um, I wish him luck. I know that this is a time when our federal government is more important than ever because they are the only level of government that can provide the stimulus to get our economy back on track. So uh, I trust the governor to make a good decision. Uh, he has lots of great options and we will see. Okay, but are you interested? Could you see yourself go to Capitol Hill? Um, you know, I it, it, it's, it's the honor of a lifetime. And especially right now where our federal government is playing such a critical role. Uh, if he called me and asked me to serve in that way, I certainly would say yes. I'm not holding my breath. I'm very focused on being the mayor of Oakland. Uh, my city needs, needs everyone right now to focus on our recovery. Uh, but at this moment, uh, of course, it, it would be a tremendous honor to serve uh, but he has lots of other great choices. 